everybody. So today we are looking at our next entry in the Disney Canon project that we've been doing all year. And uh, you have to excuse me, I'm a little under the weather, so my voice is not 100%. Uh, but we're looking at their 53rd animated classic, and it is Frozen. Uh, of course, Frozen is that little indie that often gets forgot about uh, in the Disney lineup. <laughs> No. <laughs> it was a massive, massive, massive hit. Uh, it actually stayed in the top 10. Uh, it opened in the end of uh, November uh, 2013 and it stayed in the top 10 until March of 2014, which is just like unheard of. I mean, that's just amazing. And uh, there's a lot of reasons why. I think it really was so popular and it really, uh, so many people responded so positively to it. And I certainly responded very positively to, positively to it. And I think one of the big reasons is because it was the first Disney film to have two protagonists, two Disney princess protagonists, uh, that they've had a few others that had like groups, like you might have the Jungle Book or you might have Aristocats or something like that. But the, this was, or the 101 Dalmatians would be another one. But in this case, this was two sisters and they they haven't done anything quite like that before and i think uh, pretty much any girl can find something they relate to either about anna or elsa and uh, so i think it sort of drew a wide net uh, of people because of these two lead characters and i i think they're really good lead characters uh, i i think that I certainly relate to both of them in many ways. And uh, I think that most of us are siblings. Most of us have that relationship. And and I know I have three sisters. And so I really related to the the ways that they are they fail at communicating to each other and the, the struggles that they have. Because uh, I've experienced that with my own sisters at times. And uh, so I thought that was really, really good. And the other reason I think that this movie did so well was because it felt fresh and new and innovative. In ways, it's sort of surprising it did so well because uh, it, it it was very experimental. They took a lot of risks. They changed uh, uh, things, the formula up a little bit. One very innovative thing that th th they did in this movie is that first true Disney Broadway musical that they've ever done. You might say, wait, 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 they've done had Broadway musicals before. Mm, they've had more of a mixed sound to pop sound depending on the the, sh the movie F tangled for instance was definitely a pop feel to it where uh, the early renaissance films were more of a mixed sound they combined broadway and uh, and classical this was the first time they ever done anything that was like true belt and also the way that they did sort of the singing with the dialogue uh, if you watch things like uh, for the first time the reprise Alone and free just stay What do you mean you're not? I get the feeling you don't know. What do I not know? Arendelle's in deep, 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 deep snow. You can see how they kind of masterfully combine the dialogue and the the music the way that a Broadway play does. And it just sort of builds and builds and builds and builds and, and, and as opposed to just having dialogue, but it's actually sung dialogue, if that makes sense. And that's what a Broadway musical does. Sure you can. I know you can, cause for the first time in forever, oh, I'm such a fool, I can't be free, to be afraid. no escape from the storm inside of me, I can't control the curse. That was something different and fresh. Also, some of the choices that they made in the story, I think, were very fresh and new. Uh, the the way that they decided to focus on sibling love as opposed to romantic love, and uh, and to me that was really refreshing, and I really liked it. And you know, to see uh, Anna and. Elsa's love for each other be the thing that broke the spell. I think it was really cool. And uh, I think that it was also fresh at the time to have a, to have Hans become the villain. I don't think 
I, like, I certainly wasn't expecting it. You know, now, now they've done a bunch of surprise villains, so maybe it's more expected. But uh, the thing is, is, it never had a song where where they are sort of the romantic co-lead. Uh, you know, that that was really, really good. And, and so that made it a big surprise to me, at least. And I thought the whole time that it was going to be uh, Elsa was going to be end up with Hans. <laughs> and then they surprised me to have him become the villain. And you know, the Lopez's, I think, did a great job with the music in this movie, uh, especially the first act, the way, like I said, the way it feels like a Broadway musical is just so cool. I'm a huge Broadway fan, and, and they just got such great talent uh, to be involved with this. I mean, Idina Menzel is the best, and uh, that what they do that's so smart is the way they're able to uh, build up Elsa's character to earn the let it go moment. So she is is told, you know, it's interesting because I feel like there's lots of comparisons in the in Frozen to The Little Mermaid. Uh, but the thing about The Little Mermaid is that Ariel is never told that, Ariel is just told to not rebel, of course, and then she does. But the difference between her and Elsa is that Elsa is told if she rebels, if she is sort of her true self, if she if she doesn't uh, keep it to herself, then she will kill her sister. That's a whole nother kind of sort of manipulation, and and you know she's told conceal, don't feel, and you can just feel it's just sort of welling up inside her. And, it, and if you've ever had like a a secret like that, if you've ever had something that that was really that you weren't able to share about yourself and be honest about yourself, uh, that's just the worst thing ever. And so it just builds and builds and builds. And, and you just get this feeling of her just sort of in this dark place, in this depressed place. And I think it's, it's really kind of cool that Disney was willing to have one of their princesses go to such a place like that. Uh, and then also the, uh, one other cool thing about Elsa is that she actually becomes a queen. <laughs> she's she's the only Disney princess who actually becomes coordinated, actually becomes a queen. She actually has to make choices about how she's going to rule. You know, that is pretty cool. And, you know, finally she gets to the point where she just kind of has a breakdown and she leaves. And uh, that's when she finally decides, no, nope, I can't I can't live like this anymore. And that's when she, she gets the let it go moment. And that's why it is so impactful. It's such, a, it's also such a great song. I know people are like, oh, it's overplayed, it's overplayed. I don't really care. For some reason, I don't have that gene that like everybody else seems to have where you get tired of things. Uh, I, I just don't. If I like it, I like it, and I, I just don't uh, get tired of things the way other people do. Uh, but I love this song. I think it is so well staged. I think it is so well sung. I think it is really emotional for the character because of what she's had to go through and how she's had to hide. And uh, so it just works. And then the story kind of continues on and a lot of people are hard on Frozen because of the plot holes and that they don't explain the magic. This to me doesn't make any sense as a criticism of Frozen because literally every movie has plot holes. and every Disney movie has plot holes. And it, so I, I think it's just a weak kind of criticism. Uh, and is there a Disney movie where they really explain the magic? I mean, for instance, Tangled, they don't really explain, are there other flowers? Where did the flower come from? Uh, you know, what's what's going on with that? Why is, why is there only this one, you know, one piece of magic? Like it's just the same as Elsa. Why is Elsa the only one that has the, the magic? Why is why is this the Beauty and the Beast? Why is there just this one sorcerer with one house that's turned in you know, turned into uh, magic? Well, there's no other magic in the movie. There's no other people who are able to have magical powers, and so I don't understand why that is a big deal. Uh, same way with Snow White. It's the same way with why is there a fairy godmother in in Cinderella? 
I don't know. It's just the magic of the story. Who cares? It's so ridiculous to me. Nothing, none of the plot holes to me are so egregious in Frozen more than any other Disney movie that it stops me from enjoying the story of Elsa and her transformation and Anna trying to learn to communicate with her sister and her getting to meet Kristoff. And I really like Kristoff as a character. I think that he is uh, honest and I think he's funny. And uh, I think that him and Anna end up having good chemistry and they become a really cool couple and uh, so I, I think it works. Another thing that Frozen does that is so good is that I, I think that it is one of, has one of the most perfectly executed side characters of any Disney film. Olaf to me uh, is is just about like I said just about perfect because uh, you have he doesn't get introduced until quite a bit into the movie and uh, so you, you don't get overdone with Olaf. You get just enough that he's charming and funny and I really like his song. My snow up against the burning sand Probably getting gorgeously tanned in summer I'll finally see a summer breeze blow away a winter storm And find out what happens to solid water when it gets warm And I can't wait to see what my buddies all think of me Imagine how much cooler I'll be in summer. And it's he's one of the only sidekicks that actually matters to the story in a significant way. He is the one that has to explain to Anna about what true love really is. And he's willing to sacrifice, he's willing to melt for her. And, uh, and I think it's a beautiful touching moment and it actually matters to the story in a way that most sidekicks just don't someone else's needs before yours like you know how Kristoff brought you back here to Hans and left you forever Kristoff loves me wow you really don't know anything about love do you Olaf you're melting some people are worth melting for. There's a, a lot of great momentum towards the end of the film where, uh, at least for me, I, I didn't know what was, what exactly was going to happen. And I think uh, it feels very tense when Elsa is handcuffed in the prison. And what what is she going to do? How is she going to get out of this? And, uh, you know, how are they going to deal with this? As Anna's getting weaker and weaker and weaker. And, you know, I think even a, a, a weaker song as far as the story in Fixer Upper, I still think it's sung kind of well, and I think it's kind of a catchy song. It's, it's sung by Broadway vets, and uh, all the songs, I think, are, are charming and well sung, well performed. And uh, I also really like in the in the beginning when you have the uh, the vel vel or I'm not sure how you say it, but the you have the ice carving song, which uh, Frozen Heart, uh, which I really feel is a lot like Fathoms Below with uh, the Little Mermaid, and it just kind of immerses you right into the story. It's very good. And uh, like I said, I think the ending really works. I I really bought it uh, and I continue to buy it. So it's showing the act of true love. I think it's beautiful. I like it. Just some of the criticisms of Frozen to me are just reaching. Like when I saw that they said it was in that she had an astonishingly impractical dress. I'm like, come on, give me a break. It is no way more impractical than any other princess dress. <laughs> 
and it, it's just a normal dress. It's so ridiculous. And uh, so I don't know. I, I just really, I like the characters. I like the animation. I love the songs. I love the way the songs are sung in this Broadway style. I really like some of the creative risks that they took as far as the story. And I, I think that it, it's just a really satisfying uh Disney movie. I really like it. <laughs> uh, there's really not a whole lot I don't like about Frozen. I I think that it was something new. It's something different. And uh, I, I just enjoy, I just enjoy it. I enjoy watching it. I think the humor is good. I think it's funny. I think it has this at, at, at its core, this message about being who you are and, and not sort of, not, don't conceal, don't feel like, be feel <laughs> like don't don't uh you know respond to mental illness and depression and and differences and everything's like that by hiding it in and and uh, and not being honest with the world like be honest and 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 uh, I love I love that message that they were able to show and I love the relationship between the two sisters being in a family is hard and it takes work and I like the fact that you see that between Anna and Elsa I like the relationship between uh, Anna and Kristoff I think that they're really good I like all the vocal performances I think are perfect I like I said I think it has one of the best sidekicks of all of Disney and uh, so yeah I love Frozen I think it's great and uh, so yeah that's my thoughts kind of on Frozen let me know what you think of Frozen where are you at on it and uh, thanks so much please subscribe to my channel and I'll talk to you later bye